Hi, Elaine here. Today, I'll be showing you how to use a great free app to quickly and easily make an El Capitan boot disk for your Mac. It's always a good plan to be prepared for disaster, never more so than when it comes to your computer. And step one of that is creating an emergency boot disk for your Mac. There's several ways to make boot disks, but using DiskMaker is one of the most hands-off, for which read terminal-free ways of doing it. And that's the way that I'll be showing you today. Now, as with previous versions of OS X, going back to Lion in 2011, El Capitan is available only as a download from the Mac App Store. It's a free update, so it's simply a matter of downloading it from the store. It will be downloaded to your Applications folder, and it will attempt to automatically run it from there as soon as it's finished downloading. There is one thing to be aware of, though. As soon as it's installed from the, your Applications folder, it will be deleted. You can, of course, re-download it, but that takes time and it takes bandwidth. So you have a couple of options. You can stop the automatic install and make a boot disk before it gets deleted. Or better still, you can make a copy of the installer to another location for future use. Now, DiskMaker is available from DiskMakerX.com. It's a free application, although they do accept donations should you find it useful. So download it, install it, and you'll be good to follow along. So with the El Capitan installer downloaded and DiskMaker installed, we're ready to roll. So the first option in DiskMaker is indicating that it supports the creation of boot disks for three different versions of OS X. Mavericks 10.9, Yosemite 10.10 and El Capitan 10.11. So I'm going to choose El Capitan here. As I've said, by default, it's downloaded to your applications folder, but it doesn't need to be in that location for the following process to work. And as I've said, best practice would be to move the installer to a different location rather than let OS X delete it from the drive. I've moved it to the desktop here so we can actually see it. So DiskMaker makes an attempt to locate that installer and it finds it on the desktop. If DiskMaker can't find the installer or you'd like to use a different version from the one it does locate, then use the Use Another Copy button and select the installer that you want to use. The next step is to select the drive or device to be used as the basis of your installer. Now, at a minimum, it needs to be an 8 gig USB stick, but you do have other options as this dialog mentions. What it's talking about is using a larger disk, partitioning it and then installing different OS X versions to each partition. It's the kind of thing a geek does. And yes, I have one of those as well. Next, you'll need to select the actual disk that you want to use as your boot disk. And DiskMaker will display all the disks it finds. You just need to select the one that you want to use. I've only got one available here, so I'll select that. And then a rather scary dialog box. And it's warning you that the disk you selected is about to be erased. Confirm this is actually the correct disk. And then it's a simple matter of clicking the Erase, then Create the Disk button and waiting for the process to complete. One final prompt, and it's warning you to expect to be prompted to enter an administrator password and then confirm that you wish to continue. So it starts copying files. And there's the password request. So enter the password, confirm that. And then it goes back to copying files. And this can take a while. It depends on the speed of your machine and the speed of the drive that you've selected. For me, with a USB 2 drive, that took about seven to eight minutes. But you mustn't miss the rather alarming notification that tells you the job's finished. I know I didn't, and it was rather alarming as I wasn't expecting it. Are you ready? <coughs> Yes, that tells you that the job's done. So let's recap. You're going to need to download El Capitan from the Mac App Store, make a copy of that installer, leave it safe somewhere, then download and install DiskMaker from DiskMakerX.com, go through the process and make your disk, and one extra step, it's always a good idea to check that the boot disk you've created actually works by booting to it. You don't want the first time that you find out it's not working properly to be when you actually need to use it. Well, I hope that helps you. And if you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com VIP.
And if you enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up. And I always appreciate it when you share it with your friends. If you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.